am just back from Denmark. A uh, little trip, little birthday treat to myself. A little trip in Denmark to see my uh, one of my old high school friends. And it is much warmer and sunnier over there than it is here, uh, even though it's way more north up there. So that was a bit of a surprise. Um, and, and now I'm, I'm kind of feeling a bit of the shock. I think it just got colder while I was away, but that's why I have my blanket and my warm rabbit mug of coffee here. Um, and I, I filmed a lot of, well, I filmed a bit of stuff while I was in uh, around Copenhagen and around that area. Um, and uh, I'm going to turn that into a little vlog for you. But I think uh, in the meantime, just uh, I thought I'd quickly, uh, to, to get a video out there, I'd quickly go through some of my favorite characters that have been stuck on islands. It's actually an idea I had like about a year ago and I put it in a Word file and then I just forgot about it. I was into doing like character based videos. Um, when I started this channel and, and that kind of just fell by the wayside. But uh, this is appropriate because when I found it, um, the, the reason I originally had uh, this idea to do characters stranded on islands um, was because one of my favorite characters, uh, Elsie Lintner, um, is, well, is it, she's not really, well, that's the thing. Uh, I deliberately don't say castaways here. She's a middle class woman in, uh, I think is it Copenhagen? She's in Denmark anyways. Uh, it's a Danish book, I should say, by Karen Michaelis. Um, and one of my favorite books. But yeah, uh, Elsie Lintner, she uh, basically decides, she's around 40 years old and she and her husband decide to get divorced and she has this island um, prepared for her to go to and she just sort of like opts out of social life because she decides that, um, it, you know, like this is the best way forward. Uh, like if you're, if you're a woman of 40 and you're going to be divorced, then you might as well just exit society, <laughs> um, is, is her way of thinking. And so she goes to this island. Um, and it's, uh, it's kind of, yeah, about like feeling lost at that age. And, um, you know, like once you've lost your reproductive role in society as a woman, but you still have sexual desire, then sort of like, um, what, how do you exist? And these kind of questions, um, she's just the best narrator it's written as an epistolary so it's written in like kind of diary entries and stuff she's so bitchy vindictive uh like snarky kind of mean <laughs> insecure uh lonely and pensive and she's just goals really like um and and the island is she's kind of stuck there because it's also like um even though it's the place that she wanted to escape to from society she's also longing for human company and um and the way that she has two servants, by the way, on the island, I should mention. <laughs> and she's probably one of my favorite stranded on an island characters uh, that I know. I'm going to keep on looking in this direction because this is where I have my laptop and I've got my little list. So the next one I have written down is Ariadne. Um, so Ariadne from the myth, but also from the book that I read recently by Jennifer Saint. Um, she is the Cretan princess who falls in love with the Athenian prince Theseus and helps him to defeat the Minotaur by giving him the clue, which is like a spool of thread um, to get through the labyrinth, which is where we get the word clue from, incidentally, uh, because like a clue is something that helps you solve a puzzle. So the clue is the thread that Theseus could use to get out of the labyrinth. Cool little factory there. <laughs> it's free, just take it. Um, but yeah, the Ariadne, right? She, she falls in love, she escapes from, from the island with Theseus because obviously she was a prisoner escape, she'd get murdered by her father. And then he takes her to an island, Naxos, uh, has sex with her and dumps her. In the morning she wakes up and he's just gone. The boat's in the distance sailing away. I think a lot of artists have painted that scene of her waking up and realizing that she's just been stranded on this island. And uh, yeah, I always like, uh, as, a, as a kid, I think I always wondered what like exactly happens and how she, how she lives on that island. I'm not gonna like go into this, the story here about like what, what her eventual fate is, but yeah, like um, I, I, I was always very curious about like kind of the, the leftoverness of, of Ariadne, because especially because it's the prince and princess narrative that you hear so many times, but in this one, the prince really just isn't that interested. <laughs> Um, and, you know, like he kind of goes along with the whole love story thing just to get what he wants and then, you know, like really horribly and callously abandons her. Um, and, uh, and yeah, like poor old Ariadne, but it's a great story. Um, next up, uh, let's stick with the, the Greeks because Philoctetes is another uh, great Greek myth guy stranded on an island. This was, um, I read this recently in The Cure at Troy by Seamus Heaney, which is itself a sort of reworking of uh, the play Philoctetes by Sophocles. This guy, Philoctetes, he uh, was on, he was with the Trojan War people, right? The Greeks were going to go to Troy and he was there on the ships and he got bitten by a snake 
uh, on some island and the, the, the wound on his foot got infected and it started to smell real bad. So the Greeks were like kind of demoralized because they had this really stinky soldier who was, you know, wounded and complaining and smelling. So uh, Odysseus and some other guys decided to just dump him on an island and abandon him because they thought it would be bad for morale if he stayed with them. So they did that. Uh, then, you know, like years and years go by, the, the Trojans are putting up a strong defense. The Greeks can't beat them. And then they hear this prophecy that the only way to beat Troy is if you have the, the bow of Hercules, right? And who has the bow of Hercules? Hercules' is good old friend, Philocrates. And he has it with himself. You know, he's on the island. So then they're like, damn, we have to go all the way back to that island and try and uh, bring the bow back. The question is, how are they going to bring it? Are they going to convince him to forgive them? Or are they just going to take it by force? And, uh, you know, like that's the whole conflict of Philocrates. It's great. It's kind of like also about you know, like, yeah, like going over the past and like when people have done a wrong to you, how do you get over that? Like, how do you forgive things? And like also bearing grudges and it's, um, within Seamus Heaney's hands, it becomes a sort of parable about colonial history as well. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's really good to cure Troy, but the, the story of Philoctetes is also just great in and of itself. Next, I have Lord Roop from The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. When I was a kid, this would have been my favorite castaway, I guess. Um, so The Voyage of the Darn Treader is one of the Narnia books, one of the later Narnia books, I think. There's one, they made a big movie out of it. Um, I remember, I never watched the movie, but I loved this book. When I was a kid, this was my favorite Narnia book. Now I think it would be The Silver Chair. But yeah, in this one, they get to an island, There's this. they find this guy, and he, they, he tells them, like, uh, he, this is the island where dreams come true. And everyone at first is, like, really excited about that, and all the sailors are like, well, finally, I'm going to be able to, you know see my dead wife again, or I'm going to be rich, or all these like things, they're all very excited. But then the, the guy, Lord Roop, who's been stranded on this island, is sort of like, no, you fools, it's like, not fantasies, but dreams, like your actual dreams, they come true on this island. And then everyone kind of like, you know, just yikes, gets out of there as fast as they can. And I love that as a kid, um, because I, I guess you never, I'd never thought about like that when you say dreams come true, um, you actually mean wishes and desires. And then I thought about like, yeah, if my actual dreams came true on an island, I would be the first person to try and get away from there. Not that I have lots of nightmares, um, but I guess like my dreams always feel just a bit off usually. I don't know, like comment down below. Do you, do you usually have good dreams or do your dreams are just kind of weird things that are like, oh, all right, well, I'd rather, I'd rather be in the real world, thanks. Um, but that, that's how it is for me usually. So yeah, that the island where dreams come true left a big impression on me as a kid. Next up, I have the class from Battle Royale. I don't know what they were called, but and I'm, not, I'm just going to say the whole class. And I actually am kind of cheating here in a way. I'm not really cheating, but I just I haven't read this book. <laughs> I just loved the movie growing up and I want to get the book, but it's not a book you see around in shops and things like that. It's not always in libraries and things. But yeah, Battle Royale written by, oh, I don't remember don't remember I'll put it I'll put it down below um, and I'm, I'll put the translator as well for good measure but yeah it's about uh, it's a sort of dystopian future Japan or alternate present Japan I forget which and the the government decides that to sort of like uh, curb use violence and also to maybe create a sort of weird reality TV thing they uh, randomly select I think it's middle school uh, classes to go to an island and play a game a battle royale where they're all given random weapons and they all have to like murder each other last man standing uh is the winner and uh and there's like oh they all have little collars with uh with explosives in them so if they try to rebel or something like that or uh then then they'll just explode and, and die uh so it's uh it's really harrowing i love the movie so much like with my friends in school we'd always be thinking oh what would you do who would you kill who would you try and save who would you trust it's interesting like how different stages in your life you also would identify with different characters and strategies for survival. Um, but anyway, that's Battle Royale. Next up, oh, I have another high school one. Uh, Simon from Lord of the Flies. Yeah, yeah, we did this in high school. We read, we read this book. It's just one of the few books in high school that I really liked and, and um, like we got to do it. it. helped that we got to make a video of it. And yeah, I was, I was Simon in the video. He's the sort of the sweet, sensitive one who's not really into all the tribalism and ritualistic murder. Um, I, mean, I, sh I should have explained the story. Like it's about a bunch of uh, boys who's play or like it's a school, again, another school and the plane crashes 
and the, the, the boys are on an island and they have to sort of survive for, the, um, for themselves. So it's sort of children creating a society and how that society kind of implodes and disintegrates and turns against itself. Simon is sort of like a nice sweet guy and he also has a weird like psychotic episode which ends up kind of giving the book its title uh, but uh, it's pretty dark and um, and, and yeah it's, it's just like uh, I remember I always liked him the best when I read it uh, back in high school. So what's next? Dr. Moreau guy I have written. So that must be the guy from the island of Dr. Moreau whose name I do not remember. Um, so the island of Dr. Moreau, there's a guy who gets shipwrecked, ends up getting picked up by a boat, uh, which, which is going to an island delivering strange animals. And on the island, there is a doctor who is conducting strange experiments on these animals. And um, it's kind of like a sci-fi mystery thriller. It's got some nice jungle vibes. And um, it also kind of poses this question of survival again, which is like, kind of what's scarier surviving with humans or surviving just in the wilderness because the main character at first he's with Dr. Moreau but once he kind of clocks what's going on he's like now I'll take my chances in the wild and there's sort of the the, the idea of, the, of the, the gap between wild and civilized and or rather than the gap there's sort of the spectrum of, of, of wild beast to civilized human um, and how important that was when this was written like in the Victorian times uh, is, is, is really explored. So if anything, it, it's a great insight into society at that time as well. Oh, then I have, then I have Jacob de Zoet, de Zoet, de Zoet, I don't know, it's a Dutch name because it's a book by, oh, what was his name? David Mitchell, um, who's famous for that thing, sci-fi thing they made into a movie, which I don't, Cloud Atlas, yeah. But this one is called The Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zoet, de Zoet. Um, yeah, that guy. And uh, I, this is the only David Mitchell book I've read. It's the re I mean, I hadn't read another one probably because of this book, because I didn't like this book very much, and it was quite thick. Uh, but it, um, I, I like the, 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 the situation, the story. Like, the reason this guy is stranded is uh, because he is a Dutch... Um, what is he, actually? I don't know what, what his actual thing is. But he's, uh, he's part of this crew which comes to Japan uh, during the period where Japan is like starting to open up a little bit. So like, I don't know when this was, like, is it 1600s? Is it 1700? No, it can't be that late. It must be like uh, 1700s or something like that. Anyway, um, what they did was they didn't allow foreigners into the country, but they created a little island, um, an artificial island off the coast of Nagasaki called Dejima, uh, which I've been to and which is really interesting as a historical kind of place. And this island was sort of like um, Japanese people weren't allowed to go into it without permission and foreigners weren't allowed to go off of it, uh, I think at all, or maybe they were occasionally, but with permission. But it was almost like a kind of a, you know, a border, a border zone for the Dutch. Only the Dutch were allowed here, like the Dutch to bring their, their trade and their, their cargo and, and, and just kind of like mingle, and their science and their learning and their medicine and basically Western culture was allowed to, you know, stay on this island. And then Japanese people could go in and like extract it carefully so that it didn't like pollute the rest of Japan with Christianity or goodness knows what else. So, um, so yeah, it's this kind of weird little hybrid border control island um, where the character Jacob de Zoet is stuck and there's a love story and there's some sort of weird cult story as well, which I didn't care for. But just the Jima and the history, the historical fiction aspect of this book, I really, really liked. I liked feeling like I was there. Um, on the island of Dejima in this sort of strange hybrid cultural zone. And then finally I have Tony and Gustav from The Betrothal in Santo Domingo, which is a short story by Heinrich von Kleist, uh, which is about the Haitian Revolution, or maybe it's not, well, it's set in the Haitian Revolution. It's about, um, well, oh, that's the time basically when the slaves kicked out the white colonizers. And this is story is about, uh, well, Tony, is tasked by her father to uh, bring in um, like the white people who are trying to escape the island um, during the, the violence, you know, um, and uh, bring them in like to pretend that their house is a place of refuge um, and then to keep them there until the father, the stepfather gets home so he can murder them. So it's got this sort of like kind of uh, femme fatale, fairy tale kind of vibe around the, 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 the premise. And then things, of course, go wrong when uh, Tony, who's mixed race, I should say, uh, starts to fall in love with one of the people she's supposed to be uh, keeping there to be, to be murdered, one of the, uh, who's this Swiss uh, white guy. 
And um, yeah, the story is very uh, like, you know, given that it was written in the 18, maybe early 1800s, I think, like very early 1800s. Um, it's got actually quite a sophisticated, I think, kind of view of race, obviously not how we would write it nowadays. At the beginning, um, both, uh, you know, like both the Swiss guy, what was his name again? Tony, right? No, he's Gustav. The girl is Tony. So Gustav and Tony both have a really strong sense of like who they are and, uh, you know, like what's moral in this, in this revolution. Um, and they, and as the story goes on and they start to fall in love, they start to lose sight of what's the right thing to do but also like how morality and race are connected to each other um and everything starts to get a bit murky i really enjoyed it like i said it's got the exciting kind of fairy tale-ishness about it it's also got the historical fiction element which is interesting um and there's a sort of like hopeful tragedy in that you know we're rooting for these two characters but we also know that they're kind of doomed because the the things that they're trying to escape is more than just this particular island of, of Heidi where, where the violence is happening. They're trying to escape something which is, you know, very big. It's like kind of political and racial and social and moral. Whatever they're trying to escape, it's something that's just too big, basically, for individuals to be able to, to get out of. Um, and so there's that. I feel like that's kind of one of the main... Um, main feelings that you get uh, like when you read the short story. But anyway, that is my list. Oh, there was also that island one I read, which I quite like the setting of, uh, what was it called? This was one, again, that I didn't actually like. This book, uh, The Light Keepers by, what was her name? Abby, yeah, I'll put it, I'll put it down below. But yeah, this, this I really like the premise of it. Um, so this is again like a self-stranding. Uh, this, this woman is a photographer. She loses her mother and she becomes a nature a wildlife photographer. And she goes to this island um, off the coast of the United States of America. I forget what it's called. Um, do I have it written down here? No, I don't. Anyway, uh, there's like kind of like a very specific harsh ecosystem and the novel follows her through the seasons as she films the different animals that come and go. Lots of seagulls lots of uh, like seals, there's mice, there's like uh, whales, there's sharks. And um, it's got a sort of like island mystery vibe to it because the people that she's living with are all like kind of biologists or scientists of some kind or another. And they're all like the kind of people who, you know, would decide to live on this kind of barren rock of an island um, to, to study wildlife. And, um, and so like, they're obviously interesting people who is like, you know, you want to know who who are they, and some sinister things seem to be afoot. There's a story of a ghost. There's some history about the islands and like who used to live there and the, how what role they played in uh, history in in the United States and in the past. Um, and yeah, like I said, I didn't like it. Basically, I thought it I thought it messed up the balance between like the the genre side of things, like a mystery novel, and then the nature writing side of things. Um, so it didn't, didn't really work for me, but the, the premise I found very interesting. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, the character, the characters there who are there to learn about animals, but are in kind of like end up stuck in human affairs. Like I, I, I thought that was a, that was a good, a really good premise. Write down in the comments, let me know your favorite, uh, people got stuck on islands. I haven't mentioned some of the famous like Robinson Crusoe's or, and then there were nuns and stuff. Uh, not nuns, but you know what I mean. Uh, like, uh, like I'm sure Agatha Christie you know, has a few island ones. I'd be very interested to hear um, other other characters that could that could have gone on this list. Um, and otherwise, I'll see you in the next video, which will probably be the vlog of of me doing stuff in Denmark. Uh, see you then. Bye.